love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Please don't ask me why. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you till the day I die. Come on, pretty baby, can't you see? From the time I laid my eyes, you had a hook on me. I was in Jamba and I, I took the opportunity. I went, we went to Saint Croix, mm -hmm. and that's where Plus Seventeen Plus actually materialized. Did it was they? in Saint Croix. Well, in Seventeen Plus. I was more of a lead vocalist. Okay. And um, in Jamban, I was really never a background vocalist. Okay. I was always a lead vocalist. Okay. It's just that um, it's very hard for two giants to live in the same house. <laughs> yes, it is. You know. Welcome to another episode of No Strings Attached, WTJX's music entertainment show with a twist. Today we're on the island of St. Thomas where we have the pleasure of meeting Mr. Pupa Kelly, also known as Kelly Charleswell. Thank you so much for being here with us today right. and welcome us, welcoming us into your home and your studio. No problem. <laughs> now, <laughs> you have an instrument on, on your lap, and I was just talking to you about this earlier, but I want everybody to know exactly what this instrument is and what it means to you. Well, it's a it's an acoustic guitar, and you know, when you're not out in the band, you know, screaming strings and doing, you know, really dance music. This is the instrument you could just you know really relax with, and it's a, it's a nice you know instrument to be around. Yes. Um, it's acoustic. It's classical. And I know you're going to be playing for us a little later today, aren't you? Oh, sure. Yes, and I'm very excited to hear your music. But before we get into all of that, I wanted to know a little bit more about your background and how you first started in music. Now, your name is Mr. Pupa Kelly. How did you get your name? Uh, it was in the studio. Um, we was doing a song, and um, in the beginning of the song, um, uh, Friday said, um, let Pup let's Daddy Friday and Pupa Kelly show you the right way. And ever since then... The name stuff. Pope You've been showing Kelly. us the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and th that was your first stage name? Uh, no, you know, they used to call me Bon Jovi because, you know, we used to play some rock songs in jam band, you know, you know, stretching out. And uh, they also used to call me Ninja. But Papa Kelly has seems to stuck once Friday had said, let Daddy Friday and Papa Kelly show you the right way. Mm -hmm. It was a song against drugs. Mm -hmm. And... It stuck from there. On. It just stuck from there. Yeah. Now, I know that you've always been into music. You've basically been a musical prodigy from the time you were small. Yeah, Can you yeah. tell us about your first experience when it came to music? Yeah, my first experience, what really got the ball rolling is I was in Antigua. You know, every summer we'd go to Antigua for vacation. And my family, some of my family up there, and my, my cousin, he had a guitar. And he would detune it so you don't bend the guitar neck. So when he came from work, he met the guitar tuned. So he was cussing and he was upset about his guitar being tuned. Somebody messed with his guitar. I told him, I tuned it. He was in disbelief. He said, no, you couldn't tune that. You can't do that. I'm just a little kid. Um, I, I tell him, yes. He said, well, you know, he detuned it again. And he said, well, tune it up again and let me see. So I, I tuned it up and he was freaked out, you know, totally freaked out because I remembered the pitch just by hearing him play. I remembered all of those pitches. Yeah. So I just sang the pitch in my head and tuned the guitar. So with that, he realized that I had a knock for it. So he gave me a guitar with three strings on it, an acoustic guitar also. I brought it back to St. Thomas. And, and it's been like that ever since? Ever since. Now, I really would like to hear you play this instrument. Do you have a song for us that you want to play now? Yeah, I can do a little thing, one of my songs. Um, okay. Well, I call this one um, Bachata. It goes, A little sweet bachata song Penetrate me brain It's sounding too sweet Driving me insane Move my feet and twist me waist With a trembling move Right now, lot of feeling bachata groove So give me jump, jump, jump So give me bachata jump I Give me jump, jump, jump I Give me bachata jump Oh, oh Make me want to dance all night. Bachata it out of sight to the bachata. Oh, bachata. 
Down in Santa Domingo, bachata music for so to the bachata, bachata. So give me jam, jam, jam. So give me bachata jam. So give me jam, jam, jam. So give me bachata jam. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> For some reason, when I was hearing all of that, I was like hearing drums and um, all kind of different sounds, and you were just playing one guitar. Well, like I heard a whole song just now. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yes. You must put rhythm in your music. Definitely. So even if you're playing with a guitar alone, you have to have the effect of a full band. Yes. Yeah. That, that was a great job. I really love that. Did you um, write this song? Yes, I did. Uh, how, when did you write this song? I can't remember the exact year, but I, I wrote it a, a few years ago when I rejoined the band. The last run I had in Jam Band, I, I wrote that song because um, one day I was um, buying some food, uh -huh. and everywhere I go, I'm hearing all of this bachata music. So I said, wow, our island is being invaded with, <laughs> with, you know, with, the, with, with, with the Hispanic song, yes. you know what I'm saying? So I said, okay, I'm going to do a Hispanic song. Wow. And then I, I did it, this one I called it Bachata. Oh, well, before we get into um, Bachata and, and Jam Band, I want to hear about their earlier um, music um, ventures. So what was the first, I guess, time you really entered a band or a, a orchestra or anything that that you really could show your, your musical talent? Oh, well, from, from high school, you know, we were, we were actually active with music and we had a little band in high school. And, you know, upon graduation, you know, I, was, um, I attended the University of the Virgin Islands. You know, I, I do have a bachelor's degree in music education. And uh, while I was going to class one day, I saw um, Mr. Eddie Francis, we just call him Quayla, who was the manager of Eddie and the Movements. And he saw me and he said, you know, um, come. And he called me and he said, you know, what are you doing? You know, I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm here going to school for music. And so he said, he well, listen, come and keep up your chops, man. Um, it's not a lot of money, but you could, you know, get some experience playing. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the opportunity and that's where it went from right there. Wow. So did you ever had any formal training before he met up with you? Um, well, yeah, because remember, I... I, I I trained in high school. Actually, I, I, I came to college and I studied trombone in college because I'm a trombonist also. But I, I started off playing trombone with him because he already had a guitar player and eventually I ended up playing the guitar. Formal training for the guitar, I'm self-taught. Oh. There's no formal training for my guitar. I actually did this. Um, it was a, a self-venture. I love the instrument so much. How did um, the teachers take to you when you were younger and playing instruments? Uh, well, you know, all teachers take the students different, but at the very beginning, you know, I, I did get a class with a guy they call Johnny Lamata. Okay. And he's more of a classical type guitarist. When I say classical training, classical concept, ca classical mentality. So, you know, in our lessons, you know, he might give you a couple notes to play with or a Lee or something. Just a couple notes. You know, but I was stretching it out, you know. I went ahead in class, I was doing stuff like. You know. In elementary school? No, yeah, I was a kid. I was a wow. kid. Wow. So I, I was doing that, and um, he said, um, stop that. You know, <laughs> do, you know, do what I tell you, you know, what I told you to do. And, you know, because of that, you know, it was kind of iffy. But. Um, Were you ever discouraged when, um, when a moment like that would happen? No, of absolutely not, you know, because I was really aggressive with it. I wanted to learn to play the guitar. And like uh, in high school, there were some teachers that I can remember that was really supportive. Some wasn't that supportive, you know, but, you know, at the end of the day, I knew that I love music and I knew that I wanted to play. So I, I didn't allow anything like that to discourage me. You know, I wanted to learn to play the guitar. I really didn't have a teacher, but I still went ahead and learned to play the guitar all, all on my own. Did you ever have a, a like a, a certain drive to team up with your classmates and create a band like during lunchtime and things like that? Yes, we did. We yeah. Did. Yes, yes. We had a, a band in high school called Rhythm and Brass. Wow. That was in the early the early days, you know. And um, we used to you know try to play when we can. If if Eddie and the Movements or some other band was playing somewhere, we'd go to the leaders of those bands and say, "Can we sit in? Oh. You know, when you all take a break." 
And yeah. how did they take to that? Did they? They take well to it because we s we sat in a couple of times with some some groups. Did you ever have a, a situation where you played for somebody that you admired and they maybe um, hated on you or they were a little flustered or they felt like you were intimidating towards them? Did you ever have a situation like that? Because you you grew up playing instruments pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, I I I I can't say particularly if anybody felt a, a way, but I know I was, I, I was the kid. Everybody had known me, even if they didn't know me, because I was living in the Down Street area, and I would walk to high school, and I, I always would walk with my guitar. Everybody knew me as this chubby boy mm -hmm. walking with a guitar in his hand every day, regardless of what. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, in, when, in my high school days, you know, people actually... Uh, was supportive like some of the students would cheer me on you know like if I do something I play one time we had a, a, a stage band in high school and um, I copied a solo in um, I think feel so good Chuck Manjoni okay. uh, and um, when I was when I started to play the whole band just break down and, the, and the, the, the conductor said he turned his back and you're like I can't believe this <laughs> you know and students were like saying yeah 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 you know <laughs> stuff like that you know yeah. so you know, I mean, along the way, you know, music have um, its ins, its out, its up and down. You know, it's very competitive mm -hmm. all the time. So, Th what, what would you classify yourself as? Did you say I'm a great player, or were you like I have improvement? I need to make improvements. What oh, was your mindset? Oh, by far, I need to make a lot of improvement. Do you feel that way now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, oh. I, I'll never, I never will call myself a great player. You know, some people say Kelly, you play well, and you know, I've played with a lot of people. Um, I, I play with Morgan. There's a popular guitar player around here, and you know he wanted to team up with me to play in clubs. You know, um, so, you know I, I I think that for a self-taught person, I did well. Mm -hmm. I, I have a lot more to go. Uh, by far, this this instrument have so much to learn. I don't think it's a, a guitar player that do, that did everything yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Speaking of did everything yet, I want to hear another song. Okay. So which song would you like to play for us today? Uh, let me see. I could do Love is What Makes the World Go Around. It goes a little bit like this. To what, to what, to what, to what? To what, to what, to what, to what? To what, to what, to what, to what? Oh, to what, to what, to what, to what? To what, to what, to what, to what? To what, to what, to what, to what? Oh, 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 oh. I am certain, no more searching, you're all I need, a love so real, you came along, now I'm so strong, let the world know, let our love show, you rock my boat, shower me with love, you're like the angel from up above, no one could ever come between me and you. A storybook with a happy end My lover girl, you're also my friend Sometimes I think it's all too good to be true Love is what makes the world go round And babe, I am in love with you Love is what makes the world go round And babe, you know I still have love for Come on, pretty baby, can't you see? From the time I laid my eyes, you had a hook on me. And no matter what they do, oh, I only want to be with you. Love is what makes the world go round. Love is what makes the world go round. Come, girl, with me. Join this journey, take this love trip, so romantic, angels on high, hear my love cry, never will part, you've got my heart, you rock my boat, shower me with love, you like an angel from up above, no one could ever come between me and you. You turn a flicker into a flame Oh girl, whenever you call my name Sometimes I think it's all too good to be true Love is what makes the world go round And babe, 
I am in love with you. Love is what makes the world go round. And babe, you know I still have love for you. Love is what makes the world go round. Love is what makes the world go round. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. What inspired you to write that song? Oh, um, wow. Sometimes my songs come, it's kind of weird, mm -hmm. but it comes late in the night or four in the morning, you know, when I'm just in between sleep and wake. Or sometimes it just comes, mm -hmm. you know, because I wake up and I say, you know, let's go in the studio because I have this thing. I, 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 I thought about it last night or four in the morning. It just comes. And you and when you write your music, it's in one setting? You write the whole song in one setting? Uh, I can. Certain times, I could do it in, in more than one setting, mm -hmm. but I can sit there and do it in one setting. Mm -hmm. So speaking about writing music, I want to talk about the awesome jam band. Mm -hmm. How did you first get into this band? Well, like I told you, I was attending the University of the Virgin Islands, and one day I was going to class, and I saw uh, Eddie, and he, he offered me the opportunity to come and keep up my chops, and, and that's where it started. And how was the first experience meeting this entire band? Uh, uh, it was great, because I, I, I really um, admire the band. I have a lot of friends that I played music with, I, like Roy Chesterfield, uh, he's a drummer, Ray Francis, uh, Bernard Smith, James Smith, um, Calvin Jones, Robert Leonard. I, you know, I play with a lot of guys, and that is. yeah, the, the experience was was great. And I, you know, it gave me an opportunity to exercise my musical skill because I went into jam and I started writing for the band, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I even started to write for them for the brass ramas and stuff. So you could imagine. It was like a kid in a candy store. Yes. You have a band and you could write music and actually have them perform it. It That's was the, it was the, it was it was amazing. It was amazing. Who had such a great experience and and traveled the world and was able to write your music and have them play. What was the reasons for you leaving the band? Um, we had a we had a real good run. We had great times. We had differences. The very first time that I left jam band was based on where the band was heading, where it was going. Because, you know, as a kid, you just want to play. But when you start to grow up... I get older and have I get Yeah, you start to see... You no, know, you see the other side of it. Oh. Because it's an institution that, you know, you, you make, you, you're playing for money. And as, a, as a, a member of a band, you start to ask questions. You want to know, like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, but you, you're not, you know getting let's put it that you're not getting the lion's share so you want to improve on that you you you, you know you you're doing music you're doing creative stuff but now you're getting business minded mm -hmm. and you say we could do a lot more oh okay so how did how did um you get into 17 plus after um jamban well okay you have you know, the dates is a little mix up 17 plus came way before okay i was in i actually as a as a youngster when i joined jamban you know, I knew a lot of guys, like I knew Azik, I knew Funk, I knew um, Joey, I know these guys. And, you know, Funk used to play with Imagination. And um, Joey also played with Imagination. And just like musicians have a way of wanting to do things different. You not, might not be the, the strong hand in the band, but you are the creative hand in the band. And when you can't get things done, you know, then you have to break off and try, try something on your yes, own. Yes. So I was approached by those guys and I kind of, I was in jam band and I, I took the opportunity, I went, we went to St. Croix mm -hmm. and that's where 17 plus actually materialized, did it was in St. Croix. Did jam band feel a way that you went ahead and did that? Yeah, they felt a way but they never, when I came back, they never turned me away. Mm -hmm. You know, at the time, um, you know, Eddie was a really, um, father figure in the band mm -hmm. real great person and mentor and everything so you know the band 70 was keep moving 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 back and forth back and forth i was going to school so i thought it was too much for me mm -hmm. so i i did 17 plus i recorded with them with the first two albums and then i i went back to jam band mm -hmm. 
And when you was in 17 plus and when you was in Jamaica, you were playing the same instruments and being a, a background vocalist also? No. Well, in 17 plus, I was more of a lead vocalist. Okay. And um, in Jamban, I was really never a background vocalist. Okay. I was always a lead vocalist. Okay. It's just that um, it's very hard for two giants to live in the same house. <laughs> yes, it is. You know, and um, I, I think that, you know, I'm one of the giants that st stood toe to toe with the giant, you know. Yeah. And um, that's just how that was. Right now, mm -hmm. uh, I feel about music no different than I felt 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. I love music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, from the cradle to the grave, that, that's the way it's going to be. I, I don't particularly, I, I pull back. I, I do a lot of production. I do a lot of recording and, you know, stuff like that. I pull back from actually playing because... Right now, the way the music is happening in the Virgin Island, with the exception of a f couple of bands, they have a new thing. We put people fuse like rap and reggae type singing and moving away from singing melodies and mm -hmm. stuff like that, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like a chant. Yes. Even if you go hear a band play, you, you, you think they're warming up, but they're actually playing. Yes. You know, so. It's very different. It's very different. So, you know, you know music requires, a qu requires skill. Mm -hmm. And I have skills to play, and if I can't get to play, I, I, I mean, I ain't gonna stand up all night and play something like. Walk up. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, you know, I don't want to do that. I could, That's what we have a lot of nowadays. You nowadays, know I mean, I, I could do something in, in the same vein, but I, we had the same reaction, the reaction that they get from their crowd. We had it. Yes. The same reaction yes. with playing music. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was in St. Croix and we was, I was doing a song, which one of the songs I can play today, um, named Love You. And in, in playing Love You, the police had to stop the jam. Wow. Imagine, this is like playing at 120, really slow. And the people went totally crazy. So how can that not happen today? I really don't know. But they've changed the music. It don't require a lot of skill. To, to, to do it because the computer is, is an integral part of the music now. And when I was playing, you had to know how to play your instrument. That's what made the people move because I was playing in Tatolo one day at the racetrack. Mm -hmm. And a lady came and she was listening to the band and she came up to the stage and she said, listen, if you listen to this band and you don't move, you're not a human. You're <laughs> dead. You're yes. a zombie. <laughs> yeah. You are dead. And she said, you must move. Mm -hmm. You know, so. yeah, every band, um, I would say, that is older than 20 years, I know that people in our generation, my generation, your generation, still moving, especially the music that you guys used to make mm -hmm. in jam band. It's definitely music that people nowadays are still listening to. Yep. Yeah, the music has changed a lot, but I, I would think that people at your caliber might be a little bit, disappointed but still proud of the youth that's coming out and and putting their talents out there well i, I am I, i'm very open to music i've always said that i told everybody that i told my buddies i'm not a stickler and i don't condemn at no point however um when we were playing music this there were some people that would be very negative of what we was doing and how we was playing it mm -hmm. But the band was growing exponentially all the time like this. Eh? Yes. And going all over the place. So I said, what are we doing wrong if this thing is so popular? Yes. But that's just nitpicking. Uh, you know, but um, what I'm saying is that I don't have a problem with stepping back and watching people use their own creative juices regardless to what mm -hmm. it is. But I'm also hopeful that they could learn the craft. Yeah. Because if they learn, if, if they don't learn the craft, it's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, that mean it's just like it can be robotic. Yes. So you step. That's back. what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. So you step back, and and I understand that you created a musical great Sherwin. Can you tell us about that experience? Yes. Um. You know, Sherwin went to um. Gomez School of you know that's I, I teach band and instruments over there. Uh, when he came to class, you know. Uh, band class, he wanted to play the trumpet. And I told him, I looked at him, I looked at his face, his obicolatis oris. What was that? 
the, the obliquity <laughs> is like an Italian word for the muscles in his face and the way his face was shaped. Okay. His fingers, and I say, you know, he's a saxophone player all day. So I tell him, I want you to play the saxophone. He really wanted to play the trumpet. I said, no, I want you to play the saxophone. Well, ain't no secret and ain't no question. If you know anything, you, you probably would know about Shawin. Yeah. He is exceptional, man. I started, also I started the Fish and Fungi Band. Mm -hmm. It was a Quail Bay Band. Mm -hmm. And we started that at Gomez School. You know, and um, Shawin was the lead saxophonist. And I also was giving him some, you know, secrets about performance and singing. Yes. So he would go up and play saxophone and then go to the mic and sing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they went to, they, at sixth grade, they were graduating, they went to BCB. And apparently, they continued under a different name, the Flambo Combo, or whatever uh -huh. it is, over at BCB. And, you know, they keep doing their thing. So, you know, that, that makes me feel good to know that um, I could, you know, be in interactive with people with of that caliber. Yes. You know? Now, it's exceptional um, player. Um, you're an exceptional teacher and before we leave from you today we would like to hear another song can you tell us another song that should be playing for us oh my gosh what about this one is a popular one you know it goes banana pop banana pop <laughs> I really love that song. I was singing it with you right yeah, there. Yeah. I can't sing, but I, I will definitely sing it with you just yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for meeting us today. It was a pleasure being here on this island, having this interview with you, speaking oh. with you, listening to your music, your voice, your yeah. story. Everything yeah. about that was just great. Thank you so much for being with us today. Now you've heard the sounds of Kelly Charleswell, also known as Poopa Kelly. We've heard about his beginnings in jam band up until now where he has been a musical instructor for more than 20 years. We'd like to thank you, our viewers, for tuning in to No Strings Attached, WTJX's music entertainment show with a twist. Until next time. <laughs>